Hi, everybody. It's your teacher, Meg. Um, I just wanted to do another um, catch up on the discussions from last week and talk about a few of the issues that came up. Um, I wanted to pay particular attention to the discussion on repatriation because that's a really interesting topic. I hope, first of all, that you learned a new word, repatriation, returning something to its country of origin. Um, it's probably, this is probably not the only context you'll hear that in. So I hope that it's an issue that you become more and more aware of. So um, I wanted to talk about the different ideas that came up and how to approach the topic. Um, and there's like a lot of different ways to look at it and come at it. So um, Andrea made the comment um, that there was a woman in a podcast who gave an excellent example of Nazi raising and destroying art. Um, and... This is an excellent example that argues the legitimacy of the Elgin marbles to sell. Um, the idea of the legitimacy of the act. Okay, so Lord Elgin took the marbles in a way that could be presumed as legal, but um, he was not um, someone who had any kind of authority, right? And then next to that or going along with that um that he was in negotiations with the ottomans right so the ottomans had no legitimacy in terms of speaking for the greeks when the deal was made so this whole idea of an outside group making decisions for a culture that they're not a part of so this it's, it's really an offense right it's an offense to the culture so the offense of outsider rule was really one of the at the heart of the um the debate and um next we have isabel alvarado who um brought up a remark um that it's time to heal the wounds of the monument with the return of the marbles which belong to it so that's a really powerful statement thank you isabel for pointing that out and that really brings us brings up the idea of um my kind of favorite approach to this um discussion and and um, the controversy is to put the monument first, right? Maybe not thinking in terms of nations or people or power or economy, but actually the artwork itself, right? And so I love this argument. Thank you for bringing it up, Isabel, that um, the the um, building of the Parthenon, the artwork and, and the magnificence of it standing alone is what's important. Um, and that kind of plays with the idea that the, that Greece has created this new museum. And so, um, Alan, Alan, sorry if I got your name wrong, Faye, Ali, Alan, um, brought up this up that the beautifully designed museum was built right next to the Acropolis itself. So it's, it's really maximizing the power of the location um, that the um, marbles were born into, right? And so, that's a really powerful argument in, in all of it. If you're going to, you know, put, like I said, put aside um, politics and put aside power struggles and put aside economics, that if you're just thinking about the artworks themselves, the site of the new museum is a really compelling factor. Um, so um, Irene Lagoon has brought up this interesting point. Um, this is not a minor piece of art, but a piece that defines a national identity. Uh, the identity of a country, and it makes sense as a whole. And I think identity is a really powerful argument, especially when you kind of, it makes it easy for us individually to relate to it, because if you think about personal identity, right? So if you think about yourself, and if, if a part of what um, you were got stolen, um, a part of something that you thought really defined you got taken, without your agency, without your permission, um, then, then you can kind of compare it to how it feels for Greece, I think. Um, McKenna Mars kind of brought this up too, this, this um, issue of whether or not it's legal versus whether or not it's right. And this is really interesting because you, you kind of have to decide which perspective you're gonna adopt when you enter this argument. Um, is, is our legal arguments more important or moral arguments more important if it's right or wrong? Um, are economic arguments more important or aesthetic and artistic arguments more important? Um, so this was a, she um, made a really compelling point. Um, yes, marble pieces may have been removed legally permission, but it was done through bribery and corruption. And I don't believe it was the right thing to do. 
Um, and so there's this element of just what is, um, you know, it kind of has a sense of being fair and being just basic rights of how how things should be done in a way that's equitable and um, treats everybody fairly and there's something about the the transaction of this it doesn't just it just doesn't smack of being fair um so camille brought up a really interesting point um that um, was part of the um one of the interviews um the energy spent on antiquity drains from modern creativity um but is it is it worth the fight? You know, and I think that's um, a really, really good question, right? Is it worth the fight? Is it a thing from such an ancient time? Do we need to worry about it anymore? And I think this is where the argument or, or the parallel, the comparison of making it personal, like thinking about it in terms of personal identity, a personal affront, how long till it, it's okay to give up on it? Right? How long will those things linger um, for in a person's like personal history? And so then you can expand that feeling to incorporate the larger culture. Um, then I, I think it makes a, a really interesting part of the argument. Um, so um, also Camille pointed out um, the marbles belong to the Parthenon itself, um, and it's a building that's nowhere else in the world. So factoring the, the, the um, component of um, kind of what we call in, um, in art making and in sculpture, we call it site specific sculpture or artwork that's made for a particular place, not just any place. And there are some sculptures um, that are made to be moved all around, right? They could be put in any museum anywhere and people could admire them. But there are certain artworks that are made for just a particular place. So think um, of the Sistine Chapel and the ceiling that Michelangelo painted there. Um, I think I've referenced that a little bit. We'll look at, we'll see more of it when we get to the Renaissance. Um, but you can't just take that out and put it anywhere in the world. It would be totally different. So th this idea that the building itself, the Parthenon itself is the real owner of the marbles. I thought that was a really um, interesting uh, place to take it. So, so thanks Camille. Um, Julie brought up um, again, this, this sense of it being a unique place. Um, and she brought up the quote that the marbles in fact belong to the Parthenon, a building here, nowhere else. So, um, sorry, that's kind of what Camille said. Um, so we also have Victoria who, um, brought up this quote by, um, the Greek president say, it's time to heal the wounds of the monument <laughs> with the return of the marbles, which belong, which it belongs to. And um, that's an interesting, again, that's kind of a, what we call personification, um, taking um, some of the abstract and turning it into or comparing it to something very personal um, and unique to like an individual. So when you think about it like um, as a wound, as a, as a injury done to the building itself, that lends itself to a very compelling argument that they should come back to that building, right? That building itself should be restored. And even though you can't restore it physically, it's still um, the new Acropolis Museum would put it really close to that. Um, so Hannah brought up um, the idea of sharing the marbles with the world, right? And this is a really legitimate question about, um, you know, it's really easy to say that the marbles should go back that they belong to the Parthenon, they belong to Greece. But then you have to consider the whole um, mission of museums at all, everywhere around the world. And that is to share artworks with, um, with a wide, um, you know, culturally and world, uh, worldwide basis, right? So you take something from another culture and you, you send it away or you have it on view in places that wouldn't otherwise have access to it. So that's the very nature of museums, right? So um, if it, if we think about it that way, if we think that art belongs to the world, if artworks, once they're made, um, should be seen and appreciated as widely as possible, then that, that adds a wrinkle, doesn't it? It really um, makes it, the argument a little less 
clear and cut and dry. Um, <clears throat> and then um, Caitlin brought up the, the one issue that's really the most problematic issue of the whole discussion um, and pointed out how, and the, one of the interviewees pointed out, um, it would be, it would open up a larger debate as to whether the artifacts must be returned to their original places. So if, if the, if you agree with the um, point of view that the Elgin mar marbles should go back to the Parthenon because they were taken without permission, guess what? A lot of museums around the world have artworks that they never got permission to take and that were not theirs to take and that the cultures that made them a lot of times want them back. There's plenty of stories of um, um, indigenous cultures that are asking for things back because they were never, they never gave permission for them to be taken in the first place. Not to mention all the things, all the antiquities that were looted and stolen um, and sold illegally. Um, there's a very long history of that. The uh, Getty Museum in Los Angeles recently had to return a very famous sculpture that they purchased um, a very long time ago, but they, it was purchased um, without proper legal paperwork. Um, so if we start really towing the line on this concept, we could, you know, reduce the inventory of museums around the world pretty significantly. So it is a huge can of worms to think about um, kind of the purest approach to uh, repatriation. So anyway, those are the um, discussions that I thought brought up some really interesting points. And um, thanks everybody for an anime discussion. And also thanks too for always um, having a very civil discourse. I'm so proud that this is a place where uh, people can voice alternate opinions and things about things that are uncomfortable and difficult and political um, and still um, make it very um, engaging and um, have good, deep, thoughtful arguments. So I really appreciate that. Okay, so I'll see you guys online. Thanks. Bye.